CU 2014-06, Alex and Deborah Martin. Staff, if you will please present this case. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request by Alex and Deborah Martin for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit. An R15 zoning, the property consists of a little over eight tenths of an acre. It's located at 602 Pine Point Circle. This is along the east side of the road, about 180 feet north of the eastern segment there, or the eastern intersection of Spitfire. Uh, property is located in established residential in terms of character area. Um, it's a heavily forested neighborhood, um, and it's all single family. Um, we discussed this at length at the work session. There were supplemental standards for accessory dwelling units that govern how the primary dwelling unit is occupied. They govern the maximum size that an accessory dwelling unit can be. Um, it also allows the possibility that such a unit be detached. Um, we used to call such things like a garage apartment or a mother-in-law suite. Um, but under the current regulations, it also allows for an accessory dwelling unit to be attached. And some of the goals and the guidelines of the supplemental standards is to basically prevent um, the house from becoming a duplex that is not zoned for duplexes. In this particular case, um, it is the textbook example of what an accessory dwelling unit should be. It is truly a mother-in-law suite. It is for two family members, one of them elderly, who is Mr. Martin's mother-in-law. Um, they have added this addition to the rear of their house already. Um, it is at least consists of bedrooms and a bathroom. It is just when you <coughs> add the door to the outside and a full functioning kitchen that has the ability to stand on its own as its own dwelling unit that it triggers this conditional use. Um, so they are seeking approval of the conditional use so they can complete their addition and their renovations and actually make this a functioning dwelling unit, but still physically attached to the rear of the house and still have access to the outside. Um, as you see on the aerial, um, it's a heavily forested area. Here is the subject property, so it's pretty far off the road. From the road, and I would venture to say even from the neighboring properties, you cannot even see it. And if you were to see the addition, it would simply look like an addition to the rear of the house. Um, staff reviewed it. We have found this request consistent with the conditional use review criteria and our comprehensive plan, and we're recommending approval subject to two conditions. Number one, conditional use approval shall be granted for an attached accessory dwelling unit as depicted on the submitted site sketch and floor plan. The dwelling unit shall maintain compliance with all applicable code requirements for such dwelling units. Number two, conditional use approval shall expire after two years if the dwelling unit is not completed and occupied by that date. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have. All right, are there any questions for the staff? <laughs> there being none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this application? Yes, two of us. My name is Nathan Brown. Please look over, come speak to the at the podium. Uh, my name is Nathan Brown. I'm going to the game where the neighbors on either side of the Martin Wrestling. Can you, can you give us your address for the uh, for our I'm 600 pound long circle. <laughs> I am 604. We don't have a issue the addition in the back of the dwelling. Uh, I do want, we do have an issue with the kitchen because it does effectively become a duplex. And for several reasons, we feel certain when the mother-in-law goes on, it will be used for a second family is really, if my mother-in-law was living with us, we would not need a second kitchen. Uh, it is a heavily wooded area, but uh, in the lots of large bits from depth, if you drive by and look, if you're uncertain, have a continuous look, it's all packed up at the front together. Uh, my house and Tony house houses, we're right next to them. I mean like, kind of like spitting distance. Even though the 
lots go way back. We still don't have an issue with the addition, but we have an issue with having a working kitchen and two families living there in more cars. I don't, we don't see how having the prohibition against a kitchen creates a hardship if you're going to have a, a mother-in-law uh, or special needs adult, why have two kitchens? Uh, and that is our concern. As you know, uh, it's a very nice neighborhood. Uh, I have a, a lot of money according to uh, Lowndes County tax side invested in that property. Uh, we keep ours up and uh, I don't want to see it divided. And I really, you know, don't want to see two families living there in perfection. I, I just not feel certain that is what will happen. Are there any questions for the speaker? I got a question. Um, so if I hear you right, you don't have a problem as long as it's his mother-in-law living there. It's just at the point she's no longer living there for whatever reason, you don't want another family moving in. That's correct. Okay. We don't, our problem is having the kitchen. And our neighbor is adamant about having a kitchen. Why is he so adamant about having a kitchen? If my mama comes to live with us, I'm not going to put in a new kitchen for her. Uh, you know, we don't really want to pick a fight with our neighbor, but we think that's a lot to give up. And it's, you know, as you know, it's a nice area. And we enjoy it. And you get the little pen bricks in neighborhoods, period. And I think it's a you're making, uh, the staff recommends approval, but it is a very, special in the neighborhood uh, in a lot of ways. You look at who our neighbors are, and it's obvious <coughs> the planning commission should be supported <coughs> of strong special neighborhoods. And, and I don't want a hardship. <coughs> Tony doesn't want a hardship for Alex and Debbie and their family. I don't see that the lot, they'll still have their kitchen. And I, I can't believe that an uh, elderly lady's going to need a kitchen of her own. She's not going to do a lot of it. Uh, it's not like it's the Taj Mahal and she's going to have to go uh, 1,500 feet to get the kitchen. So you don't have a problem with the way it looks on the outside already. So it's not going to change anything. Well, it's already there from what you're saying, right? It was there. And, you know, all it was built before we got any notice, which tells me their application for permit did <coughs> not divulge the kitchen. They had a, obviously, is that true, Matt? They submitted for building permits to add on to the house yeah. in terms of bedrooms and bathroom and living room. It's yeah. the full kitchen that triggers this. Yes, yeah. so, and the kitchen was found with in inspector. No, they came and talked to us. This this was many weeks ago. <laughs> but, and, and you know, truthfully, uh, and they did that. You know, I understand about the mother-in-law and all of that. Uh, knowing a little something about the construction and all the Franklin Bailey no more, I think it's better off to go get another house than add on. But they chose to add on. And, I mean, that's okay, but when you talk about outside entrance and you talk about a full kitchen, that's a duplex, folks. That is what it is. And think long and hard before you make a recommendation. And we are in there very tight. The three driveways are just what, about like that. I mean, real close, and the front of the lots all go out. I 
Okay, but as long as it was just the mother-in-law that was in there, you wouldn't have a problem? We have a problem with kitchen. Okay. With the kitchen. Okay. Is that? No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we don't have a problem with the addition. We have an issue with the outside door in the kitchen because then you can have another family in there. And let's face it, when it's done, after the mother-in-law is either passed away or moved, it's done. It's there. And it's really not set up. You look at that, uh, you shouldn't have four or five cars or that. That, that is an issue in a lot of neighborhoods. Any other questions for the speaker? <coughs> we appreciate your time. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward to the podium. Take the name and your address. That's the applicant, Chairman. Um, I know the applicants, from my discussions with them, have answers to the prior speaker's questions, but he did not speak during his portion of the public hearing. All I know is what he told me, but I do know that the family has reasons for the dwelling unit to have a full kitchen. So do you want to speak in favor of this request? If I could. Okay, we'll allow that. Thanks. I understand what they're saying. I have no problem, and it's not a problem to me as long as to never pay for rent if there's a way to restrict it. And my mother-in-law is not here to take the kitchen out. We have a special needs back there you're not aware of. We have a handicapped brother that lives with my mother-in-law. And her husband recently passed away. She's way out the country. We're trying to move her into town with us to take care of her. That's why we have another dwelling. Our time is the best to see the either done. We try to hide it from him. Nobody in the secretary came by and said, ooh, there's a kitchen. We applied to go ahead because we accepted either way. But we have no problem with it never being able to rent it to anybody else. There's a way to put a restriction on it. Or I could never transfer title without taking the kitchen out. Only my mother-in-law is not going to say along with the kitchen out. For me, the reason we wanted it is because he, he is on special diets. There are, there are concerns. Uh, they are going to home sometimes. Uh, just the normal stuff. But we have no, we're not trying to do a duplex. And if, if there's any way we prevent us from not being able to do one in the future, we'll agree to it. Any questions for you? <laughs> okay, if we're calling it a mother in law suite, but is it, uh, you say it's your, is it your mother in law that's yes. moving in? Yes. And it's with the, your brother? Oh, Her son, brother in law. Her son, brother in law. Okay. All right. That's what, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for the speaker? No, we appreciate it. Yeah. All right, anybody else like to speak in opposition to this request? If not, I will close the public participation portion of this request. Uh, discussion is open amongst the commissioners. Can I just ask a question? Go ahead. Um, <coughs> I'm, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just here. Can we put a condition to that effect on there? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a conditional use request. We have a very broad latitude of casting conditions of approval. Um, if you're wanting to restrict it to family members only, um, you can modify condition number one to that effect. Um, sometimes with conditional uses in the past, we have granted approval in the name of the applicant only. Um, you could do that in this case as well. Um, doing that would require that it be used by family members only and only for that family. Okay. And, and as he stated, if he were to move and change title, he would Correct. And the way to do that would be to uncreate it as a dwelling unit, like remove the kitchen, <coughs> remove the outside doors. We're going to do what with it? <laughs> uncreate it. You, know. you guys want to help me with that? <laughs> <coughs> remove the condition. Is that basically? Well, right. In other words, turn it back to one dwelling unit instead of two. 
there's a different way that could be done. But if it remains, yeah, if it remains, if we, if the condition is to, for the dwelling to, to be, to remain only in the family, then the kitchen does not have to be removed. Correct. 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 So the condition might be, the condition perhaps could be that as long that the occupancy of that accessory dwelling is only limited to family members. Right. So therefore, I want to move in there and I'm going to have my mother law also in that building. <coughs> I, have, I can still maintain the use of that dwelling with everybody. It's just one family using the entire development, the entire building. Good. Okay. Good. All right, is there any other discussion amongst the commissioners? If not, I will now entertain a motion from the commission. Mr. Willis, I make a motion that uh, we recommend approval since it's uh, consistent with the comprehensive plan and conditional use review criteria. It's met that and uh, with the three, with three conditions, the first condition, Excuse me, two conditions will add the only two first condition. As it states, the, the only one, if the family member or the only one that can reside in this addition that's there, and uh, second number two, conditional use uh, approval shall expire two years after the dwelling is not, if it's not completed and occupied by that day. All right, we have a motion on the floor. We have a motion in a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Was it there supposed to be something about if the current occupant sells the house, the kitchen would be removed also? It's just going to be null and void if it's not a, if it's not a, uh, okay. would that need to be put on there? There's, there's two different ways. The way you worded your motion is that if this family were to move out, another family could move in and still family use the new unit in the back for their family members. It doesn't tie to any one family. Right, but family members up there. And and they only can, occupied by family members. Can't be ran out. At the time we sell the property, do I need to put a motion? So well, that's a condition that would ride over the house and would stay with it as it's used as a single family well. There's no need to tie it. They can do it safe. All right. Okay, it stands like it is then. All right, any other discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. All right, the motion passes unanimously. 